Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over the best Tenorians to get in Tales of Tenorio. But before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe, as that would really help me, and we're nearly at 2.5 thousand subscribers, and without further ado, let's get right into it. There are a ton of different Tenorians to get, and while most of them have their own strengths that make them worthwhile, some are certainly better than others. In this list, I will be factoring in both the Tenorian's general combat strength as well as the point you get it in the story. The reasoning for this is depending on the time you get a Tenorian can majorly affect its usefulness. With all of that being said, let's get into the rankings. In 8th place, we have Balasect. At first, Balasect's power seems fairly average, if not even lacking. However, as I'll explain soon, it's much stronger than it originally seems. Balasect can be evolved from Bomb Beetle at level 25 or above. Additionally, Bomb Beetle can be found in the Nature Reserve located on Route 4. You have to evolve this Bomb Beetle, however, as at the time of this video's creation, it's the only way to get Balasect in the game. Once you get Balasect, you may notice it has some fairly good moves in its move pool, and that's where its usefulness comes in pretty handy. The main move that I'll be using to showcase its power, boasting a whopping 100 base power, is Flare Up. With how powerful this move is though, you may be asking if it has any side effects. And that's what we're going to get into. Flare Up is a move with 100 base power, but in addition to this, it guarantees a hit on all Tenorians currently on the field beside Balasect. Although, this sadly includes teammate Tenorians as well. However, if you ignore this aspect of Flare Up, it can be very viable. Alongside this, Balasect gets access to Explode at level 39, allowing for 150 base damage at the cost of Balasect's HP. I recommend you run it with both of these moves, as both of them are pretty good. Coming up next in 7th place is Jesperit. Sadly, I believe Jesperit is the worst out of the starter trio of Tenorians. This however does not mean it's a bad Tenorian by any means. Jesperit has a pretty respectable base stat total, boasting a large HP and attack stat. Alongside this, Jesper has a pretty good amount of resistances, having 4 resistances between water, fire, bug, and ice. My reasoning for putting Jesper on this low of the list is due to its sadly high number of weaknesses. It has a total of 6 weaknesses, which makes it unviable for a lot of players. If you're able to look past this and are confident you can get good use out of Jesper, it can be a very good Tenorian. Jesper is the final evolution of Chuakwa, which you can get as your starter Tenorian. In 6th place we have Dual Ram. This Tenorian seems pretty average, even to me. Originally, I didn't see the appeal of using Dual Ram, especially as some people hype up Dual Ram's power a lot. However, that was until I looked at its ability. Dual Ram's signature ability is Double Hit, which, as the name implies, makes the user hit twice. This doesn't just add a little bit of extra damage, but completely doubles the damage the opponent takes. Alongside this, Duram has a decent base stat total of 510 and boasts one of the highest HP stats in the entire game at 130. That being said, Duram has access to Mystical Rush and 100 base power attack. This attack goes up to 200 damage at base with its ability, making it one of the most powerful Tenorians in the game. When it comes to virtually any opponent in story mode, Duram will be able to take them down easily. Duram can be obtained by Evolving Mangsho, available on Route 3. Starting off the top 5 is Zestric. I personally got to use Zestric during my playthrough, and getting to use him firsthand, I can personally vouch that he is very good. Possessing a high speed stat of 105, he is almost sure to outspeed most of the Tenorians that you'll come across in your journey. If this isn't enough for you, he has a decently high attack stat of 95, and a health stat of 105. While these stats are nice to have, they aren't the best part of his kit. He has access to moves that drain HP from the opponent, making him very tanky. I cannot understate how useful these moves are, as they nearly carried me through some of the battles I fought. Alongside this, it also lowers the amount of healing items you'll need to buy. Zestric can be obtained by Evolving Citrin, found in Pontero Pasture. Marking the halfway point of our list in 4th place, we have Dynastogen. Dynastogen is a bug and fighting type Tenorian, and you may ask, why is this important? While this may not seem like the biggest deal at first, this typing makes Dynastogen resist virtually every type in the game. To build on this, Dynastogen only has 3 direct weaknesses, being the Fire, Psychic, and Fairy type. These weaknesses, or rather lack thereof, make Dynastogen very powerful. In addition to this, it has some very good stats, having an 109 base attack stat. 
Dynastigan can be obtained by evolving Stagari, currently available in the Nature Reserve on Route 4. Getting bronze on our list today, in third place, is Gardamus. While Gardamus has a somewhat goofy design, that does not detract from its insane power. But the main question I had is, where does Gardamus get this power from? After doing some research into its stats, I found out why it's so good. Gardamus has a speed stat of 109, almost outspeeding any other Tenorian in the game, which is just crazy to me. But on top of this, it has a very high ranged attack stat of 105. This coupled with its attack, Lunar Rain, that has an 80% base attack power, makes Gardamus a very formidable Tenorian. Gardamus can be obtained by evolving Rabish, which is available as one of the starter Tenorians. The runner up on this list in second place is Ignadol. I personally chose Ignadol as my starter Tenorian and I can say with confidence that I do not regret this decision at all. Ignadol is a fire and flying type and this is fairly important as it rids Ignadol of all of its weaknesses for the most part, especially to the earth typing. Alongside this, Ignadol only has two weaknesses, being water and cosmic. I cannot understate how powerful this makes Ignadol, as only having two weaknesses can make a Tenorian very powerful, especially considering Ignadol's move pool having attacks of many types inside of it. In addition to this, Ignadol has one of the most powerful fire type moves, reaching base powers in the 70s, and Ignadol can be obtained by evolving the starter Tenorian Charsau. Now that we have gone over all the other Tenorians on this list, it's time to cap off this list and show off the number one Tenorian on this list being Fordrake. Fordrake, in my opinion, is one of the best Tenorians you can get in the game and for many reasons. First, let's go over its design. Fordrake has such a good design, even though this doesn't help it being powerful, its design is certainly a plus. But it's not its design where this ends. It has the typing of Dragon and Steel. This leaves it with not 4, not 3, but only 2 weaknesses total. This is so overpowered and cannot be understated as to how good it makes it. For Drake also has such a high attack stat, all the way up at 120. This makes it so powerful and coupled with its very powerful attacks making it an offensive gear to Norian. But it's not all ups for For Drake. For Drake is very hard to obtain being around a 1% encounter rate in the Malachite Mines depths. For all these reasons though, I think Tenorian is one of, if not the best Tenorian in the entire game. Thank you for tuning into my list, I hope you enjoyed it and remember, this list isn't exactly in order. If you have any other suggestions or Tenorians to get, make sure to leave them down in the comments section below. As always, thank you for your support and watching this video once again. Have a wonderful day, it's me Mr. Mugma signing off, goodbye.